Hello there everyone, interesting topic to tell you about today concerning capital gains tax. Now, this is a court case. Uh, I was recently looking at uh, a round of um, court decisions in the tax tribunals that's happened in the last few weeks and this one particularly caught my eye. So, it's to do with the sale of shares. Now then, specifically it was a trading company, limited company, two ladies owned this business and they basically wanted to sell it and they got an offer and they got an offer from a buyer and the buyer said to them, said, right, here's the deal. We're going to give you eight million pounds for your limited company, but the limited company that you got currently owes a million pounds to a lender, to a bank. So they said, look, here's the deal. We're going to give you eight million, but we want this company to be un unencumbered. We want you to clear the debt before we do the deal. That's that's the arrangement. You pay off the million pound bank loan and we'll give you eight million pounds for your share. So that was that was what they agreed on. Now, the SPA, the Sale and Purchase Agreement, that had it all spelled out. And it said eight million, but it's got to be on a debt free basis. Now, and it also said that the, uh, the buyer wants to see a deed of release to show uh, that the loan has been discharged and, and a redemption statement. So basically it's proof, which makes sense. It stacks up. You sort of think you would expect if you were the advisor for the for the buyer. That's what you would want. So this was all written in the SPA. Now then, what actually happened? When it came to doing the deal, when it came to deal time, so all this was drafted weeks, or maybe months before. But when it came to actually doing the deal, the company had not discharged the debt. The company still owed one million pounds to the bank. So what happened was the buyer said, look, this is what we're going to do. We're still going to part with eight million pounds anyway, but we'll give the two ladies who own the company seven million pounds for their shares and we'll just pay off the bank loan. So they've got the same end game as they wanted. This is the buyer. The buyer still parts with eight million pounds of cash. They get a trading company that is unencumbered. It doesn't owe any debts. It's just the mechanism. Rather than give eight million to these two ladies, they give them seven million to the two ladies and paid off the million pounds that the company owes to the bank. So, all very good. And then the two ladies come to do their tax returns to declare the capital gain and put in um, what they believe to be the taxable gain and they set up this business from scratch so the base cost was negligible you know 100 pounds or whatever a couple of pounds um, and they've got this this seven million pound gain or so they thought so they said well look we received seven million seven million is the gain so you know, three and a half million each on their on their respective tax returns hmrc opened an inquiry and said oh no 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 you got eight million pounds for it, for the company, because that's what was in the legal document in the SPA. They said, well, well hang on a minute, we, we physically received seven million, not eight million, and HMRC challenged it. They said, no, 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 listen, SPA, eight million. Doesn't matter that you actually ended up with just seven million in your hands. You basically, when you look at this deal, you got eight million pounds for the business. And so, this thing went to the tribunal and unfortunately for the taxpayer the taxpayers lost and hmrc won and it was decided that indeed the correct figure the combined gain for these two ladies was eight million and not seven million now this is just a, an example again of how you got to get the paperwork right because had the spa had there been a, a um something that changed you know, a, a clause, and you know, they had this thing been rewritten and basically said, "Look, um, the the buyer will pay seven million for the for the shares and pay off the bank one million. If that was all part of the deal in writing, that would have been fine, but it wasn't. So then they put all sorts of arguments forward to the taxpayer to say, "Well, look, this isn't worth the paper it's written on because it was a repudiation, a repudiation of the contract. Um, it's void because that's not actually what took place." 
Anyway, the tribunal was having none of it, and the tribunal came down on the side of HMRC. And one of the um, arguments that HMRC said was that basically you've got a situation called a capital contribution. So the, the vendors put in a, a million as a capital contribution, and they got eight million. So you might say, oh, well, okay. Well, isn't that akin to enhancement expenditure? A bit like on a, say, a buy-to-let property when you've got the purchase price, and any expenditure for renovations or extensions that you put on that's capital would reduce the capital gain at the back end. Similar kind of thing, the expenditure. But, but it's been tested in previous court's decision that so-called capital contributions do not act in the form of enhancement expenditure for capital gains tax. So come back to the same point from HMRC's argument that they're saddled with this 8 million gain, not 7. So very interesting case because um, you may look at it and say, well, hang on, that's not, that's not fair. They got 7 million. Um, but you can, you can also kind of see <laughs> where HMRC is coming from. Certainly the tribunal did. But like I said, if they had changed the, changed the paperwork, then actually it would have been pretty watertight and the taxpayer would have won. So for goodness sake, do make sure that you get the paperwork right. I've said this time and time again, and it's all on all, any, all sorts of things in the tax world, particularly on things like selling of shares, uh, because getting it wrong here and not changing it has meant that the two individuals have got an extra million pound of gain that they are paying capital gains tax on between them. So just an overview there on a recent case on CGT and selling shares and getting the paperwork right. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please do remember to subscribe. And as always, I will see you soon.